Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War in my Confederate campaign. I'm back from doing some traveling, so we can get back into this now. And uh, I am a major general now, and I'm actually uh, my army of the peninsula, 27,000 men strong, is part of an army group under General Joe Johnston, which basically includes all of these armies in the northern Virginia area. So it'd be interesting to see how that works with everything else that's going on. We do have a nice amount of funds and uh, also prestige that I'm hoping I'll be able to use uh, to build the army up a little bigger. So we're going to see if we actually have the ability to add any new divisions now that I'm a major general. It looks like I can. Uh, so that's some good news right there. Uh, we can add a fresh division. We'll start recruiting some new units. We'll have to just keep an, an eye on our commanders and see if there's anybody we can promote that might be better because right now division commanders are not fantastic but we're going to have to go with what we can. Okay, so I'm actually, I'm maxed out at 48 individual units under my command. So we either need to condense or we just need to stick with the three divisions that we have uh, or find a way to get, for example, some of these batteries consolidated, which I don't think I'm able to do at the moment. Uh, that really hurts me because I could probably get rid of some of these two-gun batteries and get new regiments in their place that would be a lot more effective for me i think moving forward so it took so long to get that major general's promotion that now i'm actually really close to being able to get a lieutenant general promotion so we're going to spend a little bit of prestige to see if we can't make that happen and if that can happen maybe oh there it is i'm already lieutenant general okay so i'm already in command of a corps uh, so the question is now how do we upgrade this thing to a full army uh, and can I now recruit new units with my new rank? That we're going to find out first. It looks like I can. So that's really, really good news. That's going to help so, so much uh, to be able to do that. We're going to start recruiting some new units, spend some of that prestige I've got, build this army up a little more. So it's uh, still late February, so I probably shouldn't be moving, but I'm going to go ahead and move my entire army up closer to the Union forces that are amassing here right around, looks like Harper's Ferry, uh, right where these rivers are coming together. That should be Harper's Ferry there, even though I don't see a name for it. That's a good supply depot, and I'd love to get my hands on it if I can. Uh, there's also this Confederate hospital here that we want to protect at all costs. Now, I don't know if this 3rd Division is actually here. We're going to find out, though, because we're going to start moving toward him. And if he is there, we're going to take advantage of that. I'm having heated words with General Reynolds, who commands my new division that was just built. Okay, so he does have people there, and it looks like they took off as soon as they saw our troops. My ability to command is impaired because I'm sick. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. All right, we're going to move on Winchester. We're getting into March now. Okay, we're making our move on Winchester. It's the first week of March. It does not appear there's any Yankees there which is ideal. Oh, and there is. <laughs> so they were there. And it's a pretty substantial force. Uh, numbers are almost identical. Who are we taking on? Charles Hamilton. Okay. Uh, so I'm sick, which is obviously going to hurt me. You can see it says sick real big across my name there. Uh, so we're going to have to be a little cautious, I think, on this one. Most of our troops haven't arrived yet, so we'll see how that plays out on the battlefield. So it's already late afternoon on the first day. I don't know how far we're going to move. It looks like General Rosecrans arrived with the reinforcements for the Union. So we have almost identical numbers on the field, both 28,000. I'm trying to get as far moved up there as I can because I know we're going to run out of daylight and we're going to be rede redeploying for day two. There's three objective points all right around the town that we're going to have to take, two of which are on high ground on the other side of town. I'm a little nervous that that's where he's going to be dug in. But hopefully we can get enough of these units moved up here to where it's going to let me redeploy in this area for the next day. So mostly we did get to where I wanted to be. Um, I've got two divisions on each uh, side here on the left and here on the right. This one division, Reynolds, isn't fully formed yet. They're still missing a few units, but uh, we're going to try to advance cautiously from these two roads. Uh, the main thing right now is... I want to get my cavalry going and see if we can't figure out where he is before we start issuing orders to our army. So I want to start 
just moving the calf up right to the edge of the the water here send the second Kentucky actually I probably should send them there we'll send the first Tennessee over this way over to the crossings I'm not going to try to go further than that if I can at least see to the crossings we'll move that far all right so it looks like he had previously on the first day dug in right here behind the the creek which is the perfect place for him to have been dug in but now he apparently moved further back on day two but there are some troops here that we're spotting so um let's go ahead and engage that calf there i didn't want to no don't i just wanted to have you get up there and fire on these guys i didn't want you to there we go if i dismount them that'll stop them from charging into them all right, so we've got to get moving here. Let's go ahead and pause while I issue some orders. Uh, I'm going with kind of a triangle rule with my uh, divisions and core. Once everything is fully filled out, what I'm going to have are uh, each one of my divisions are going to have three infantry brigades, each with three regiments in them. And that's a common formation that was used a lot, I know, like in World War I lesser extent in World War II. So you always have two that are on the front lines and one that's in reserve. So uh, each of my divisions can have two brigades on the front line with one in reserve, and each of those brigades can have two regiments on the front line and one in reserve in an ideal world. Obviously, depending on the situation, you may have to put more on than that. Like in this battle, where both sides are pretty much even, I'm not going to be able to hold that many back in reserve. So we're going to start moving up here to the water, and I'm going to hope that he will come at me so that we don't have to worry about trying to cross so he's being a lot more aggressive than I expected him to be which means that he's already crossed I thought maybe he'd dig in behind the creek but he's definitely not doing that he attacked my cavalry drove them back uh, so right here in the center we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be engaged before I really was expecting to uh, and in particular that's a little concerning for my artillery here because they're going to be a lot closer to the front than I'd like them to be. But I think we're going to be okay. Alright, let's try and engage these guys as quick as we can. Get them to turn around so they don't drive into my flank over here. Looks like I'm going to be able to make it up to the creek on this side. Lane isn't moving yet. Let's move him up. So it's really just going to be about uh, rushing troops into position wherever I can. i got a lot of artillery that's already opening up on him. I think that'll be helpful. Let's try to get the 2nd Kentucky where they can be open to fire. These guys got Whitworth, so they're already firing some way back from way back here. So the battle has commenced. It's... Uh, kind of spread out a little more than I would like it to be, but that's okay. Let's get a couple of these units engaged as quickly as we can. See what the situation looks like so far. Uh, we've taken a few more casualties than he has. He's, of course, got the objective points, which isn't helpful. All right. We're already wiping out these guns, but I'd like to, before the 8th Louisiana gets driven off because they're already unstable, I'm going to try to charge those guns real quick. All right. I think we uh, are going to have a bit of an advantage here terms of the firepower that we're able to bring to bear on him quicker than he can. There is nobody over here, so we might be able to get Wilcox across the creek. I'm going to send the cavalry up a little bit just to screen and see if there's some guns back there. We might try to take them out with our cav. Alright, let's get these guys moving. Who broke already over here? Oh, that was the unit I charged the guns with. I expected that. All right, so far so good. I like how things are going. The 
move these guys right in here, actually. I think we can get plenty of firepower on some of these units, like the 95th New York, and drive them back pretty quickly. John Ford needs to get off the front lines. Let's get our brigade commander back a little bit there. Alright, we are taking more casualties, but I like how it's going. Uh, I don't like the casualties. I don't really understand why we're taking so many. When we've got so much firepower on him at the moment. Right, let's get Walker's guns moved up a little further. guys up a little bit, move these guys up a little bit. I hope the fact that I'm sick isn't affecting my entire army, because that would kind of suck. I could understand it affecting the speed at which my orders go out, things like that, but it shouldn't affect the actual performance of the troops in the field. All right, we're driving back to 95th New York. Let's go ahead and start moving up. Hopefully the casualties start evening out a little bit. Looks like they are. All right, so I'm going to move Wilcox's brigade across the creek here. I don't see a lot going on. Oh, no, it's the 4th PA Cav. <laughs> My great-great-great-great-grandfather was a sergeant in the 4th Pennsylvania Cavalry. I feel really terrible about attacking them. Hopefully, Company I isn't on the front lines of things. All right, let's send out some skirmishers here to get out this battery. We're getting a lot, a lot more regiments onto the front lines now. Still taking more casualties than him, though. All right, Wilcox, get him across. We're going to bring him around and slam into this bunch of troops that are kind of parked right there. I'm really curious to know where the casualties are happening because I just don't see where I should be taking a lot of casualties. Uh, so let's take a look real quick. It's Jackson and Chatham's divisions. Specifically, all oh, the 2nd Kentucky Cav took 17%. Wheeler's Brigade. And then, so it's, it's my cavalry that's got the highest losses in both cases. Interesting. Right, who was wounded? Commander of the 15th Maryland Infantry, right here in the center. So this is where we're taking a lot of the casualties, is over here near the center. driving these guys back on our left, his right. That's good. We're about to spring our little trap here. So that's also good. Let's start moving some of these guys up.
Here we go. We're starting to fire into his rear now. Not sure why these guys just pulled back. Alright, I like how that's going. We've wiped out the batteries here in the center, so that's good. Let's start moving up on these same units that are being attacked from the rear now. Keep the pressure up on them, see if we can't break them. I have no idea what he's got back here. I can't see most of his army. I can only see the ones that are all bunched up here on the creek. Whole mess of them. A lot of skirmishers taking on this Virginia regiment here. Right, in this case, we're just gonna park our guys right up against the the creek because that does offer some cover. North Carolina Cavalry's done about all it can. Let's get let's get some infantry up on the line here. It's just a lot of skirmishers I'm dealing with right now over here. Oh, there's a big force behind over here. That's not good. All right, we're gonna start really converging on this mess that he's got here in the center. I'm hoping this is where we can win the battle. I'm gonna start charging these skirmisher units too because they're just driving me nuts. Harassing my guys there in the center. So all right, it looks like we already charged in with a couple of brigades. We're breaking him nicely. I think we're gonna shatter this whole line. Turn his entire left flank. All right, we might be getting a little too far into it now, but we have kind of moved the bar a bit. Uh, we've driven up the casualties on both sides. Oh, I didn't really want to charge in that much, but it might be working. Somebody was wounded probably in that area, 2nd Kentucky Infantry. All right, we, we have definitely shattered his entire left flank. Beautiful. And now the casualties for the first time in the battle are even. Love to see it. All right, Nathan Bedford Forrest, let's get his brigade organized a little better here. 15th Maryland's in pretty bad shape. I don't think they're going to be doing anybody any good at the moment. It's still only 1030 in the morning here on this battle. All right, we've got to try and organize our forces a little bit on this side. So I'm pushing up my right now. We're going to try to engage the next line of the enemy as best we can. Try to start driving him back out of this area. See if we can't push up toward these objectives. fire on him. I think we need to check where my artillery is and start bringing up the guns some. Got a brigade back here for some reason that isn't moving. That's Ford's brigade. I've given him orders. We're going to move him up to this side. Got a lot of fire coming down on him right now. For some reason, we're not pushing the dial, and I think it's because of those objectives. We're just not able to do much in terms of the battle until we can move on these spots, and that's going to be tough. But I like where we're at right now. We are starting to run low on ammo, so that's a bit of a concern. 
get my artillery up in a place where they can do a little more. Let's get my army commander more centralized. And then I think we just shoot it out right here for a little bit until we start using our superior firepower to drive them back again. Of course, ammo is a problem. But it looks like he's got some problems with ammo, too. Oh, who was killed? 5th Louisiana Infantry. Was that, that wasn't Isaac Trimble, was it? Where is the 5th Louisiana? Right there. Right this center. Yeah, it was Isaac Trimble was killed. Oh, and they're about to fall back, too. They're in a bad spot. Get some support up here for them. Oh boy, this is gonna be a bloody one. 3,500 casualties on each side, just about. Okay, 14th Kentucky, you've gone far enough. Who else was killed? Oh, is that James Archer too? Man, brutal. Alright, let's press things a little bit again. Try to drive him back. He's still falling back. The more we can have him in disarray as we get toward those objectives, the better. Let's get out the 4th PA Cavalry. Leave Dan Servi alone, please. Oh, they both broke. That's okay. Okay, we've pushed up toward this fence here, and I've dug in behind this fence. Still losing more men than him, but my morale's quite a bit higher. So that's why I'm kind of continuing to push things because I know that I've got the morale advantage. And his only advantage right now is keeping him in this battle is the fact that he holds these objectives. So we've got to keep pushing his low morale force toward those objectives because we're about to run out of daylight here. I think we only go till about 5 o'clock. So I think this is probably about the extent to which we can really push this. He's fallen back quite a bit. We're going to have to reform our army. It's just a mess. It's all over the place. And we're going to definitely need that day of uh, being able to regroup and reform our forces for the push on the objectives and the heights beyond in the next day's fight. Plus we need the ammunition. Oh boy. About 500 is the difference in casualties now. Don't like that. All right, that first day did not go well, and we are on the verge of defeat just because of the casualties. Uh, we've lost a 1,000 more men than him. I, I feel like I had superior firepower pretty much every spot. I guess he just has better weapons than me, probably especially his artillery. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, first of all, I've got to uh, kind of preserve some of my divisions that have really been hammered in this one. And we'll go with the, the fresher units up front. We're going to try to take this main objective right here. I don't know where he's going to be, and he may decide he's going to dig in. Um, but we're going to consolidate our army into a small front and try to keep um, fresh units as much as I can at all times. And uh, it, if it seems apparent pretty quickly that we're not going to be able to do this, then I'll probably withdraw the army. All right, so he's right there on the front. As are a lot of our units. I'm going to bring Davidson's division forward. I don't know if he's got anybody up on these hills, but if I can grab those objectives without opposition, that would be nice. Hopefully we can start turning the tide here. Because I don't want to lose a lot more men. Oh boy. Okay. Let's cover our flank here. I think we've got him. Yeah, we're going to drive him back there. Go ahead and bring up 
some help. Any of these... Okay, this regiment here is pretty fresh. Let's bring them up. Okay, Apple Pie Ridge is going to be ours. I think that's going to help. See units kind of forming back there. We're getting close to being able to push him out of the town. The question is at what cost? And he is reinforcing this gap in the center, so that's going to be a problem. We're still so close to defeat, but the casualties have, have somewhat stabilized. I'm going to bring Forest's Brigade, weak as it is, up here to help out. Gonna grab this objective finally. That really didn't change too much. We're still pushing defeat. Ugh, I just don't like how these casualties are going. I had no choice. I just, the casualties were mounting so much I had to withdraw, even though I was making progress on the field. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. I just. 6,800 casualties out of 28,000. Those are just unbearable losses, especially when you consider uh, what I have to show for it in terms of prestige. Just not, not great. It's going to be a while for me to build those numbers back up. So that was a that was a pretty rough battle for us. And of course, now our problem is that there just aren't that many recruits available to replace the losses that we've taken. We can't even recruit new units because there just aren't enough anywhere uh, so I probably was not wise to take on a battle where the odds were even like that I should have probably taken on something a little smaller ah uh, and they're coming right back at me uh, we are in no position for this fight we're gonna withdraw uh, what happened was Sibley's division went in there and tried to fight and mine are still sitting just off of Winchester there so when Sibley's division went in we tried to reinforce him, and we're just not in a position to do that right now. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is go in here and use our uh, abilities uh, as far as spending some of this prestige uh, to organize and lead a recruitment campaign so we can get some more recruits available. We did that once before, and it helped. Now we're going to have to do it again while we allow our army to try to slowly rebuild a little bit. We're only at 25,000 men and 33 guns right now, though. So apparently, my promotion to full general, four stars, has already been put through to command. I didn't have to do anything to request that. So uh, that would be really helpful, but it's only helpful if it means that I can take command of a bigger force. I may need to try and uh, look for a transfer to a bigger army somewhere. We don't have any full general size armies. Everything's still core level. Uh, even... The, the biggest army we have in the field, the Army of the Potomac, is under a major general, Robert Garnett, right now. Um, 50, 51,000 men, but doesn't look... Applying for the command is not... Oh, it's, he's engaged in battle, that's why. I don't know how much prestige it would cost for me to do that. So I'm going through and looking at my brigade commanders now, and uh, at least one thing I've got going for me is my, my commanders are pretty solid, so I've been promoting a bunch of them. Uh, that were colonels, like Nathan Bedford Forrest. Look at those numbers. My goodness. We're definitely going to promote him to Brigadier General. If anything, he ought to be a Major General. Um, but Chatham, uh, his fame's pretty high, so I think we'll go ahead and make him a Major General as well. Uh, Jackson, not so much, but he's newer to command. Wheeler, on the other hand, honestly, Wheeler should probably command that division, but it's not quite that simple to just promote him to that spot. So... Um, yeah, he's not ready. Uh, Cable may be ready. Let's go ahead and promote him. Harper's already promoted. What about Reynolds? Yeah, he's not ready. So we gave out some promotions. Uh, we're, we're starting to get some recruits going here. Let's see if there's enough to recruit a decent unit. No, not even close. Pretty much all of the recruits that we've had have been going into filling the ranks of existing units. So we're waiting for our recruitment drive to finish, and then hopefully we'll start seeing those numbers go up. Until I can get my army back substantially over 30,000, I'm sitting tight, at least for now. All right, so this is something I can do here. It's going to cost me a lot of prestige, 1,000 prestige. 
but it's going to allow me to influence this project so that we can get six gun batteries. Right now, we can't have anything more than, I think, four guns in a battery, um, which was pretty common for the Confederates. Uh, so I don't know exactly how this is going to work out in our existing batteries or if we're going to have to recruit some new ones, how this is going to work, but we'll see how it plays out. All right, looks like we're going to be fighting uh, only two of my divisions. No, maybe three. Yeah, we've got Chatham's division, Jackson's division, and Davidson's division. I don't know where Reynolds... Oh, he's over here, that's why. He's too far away to actually help out. I don't know why in the world he's over there and not with the rest of my army, because I could really, really use him. Uh, I don't want to withdraw, though. I think we're going to have to fight it. Okay, so here are my three divisions that I've got available for this fight. I also only had to spend 51 prestige to take over the, the 5,000 men of the Army of the Peninsula. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and actually, I'm going to place them up here. The idea being that when the enemy comes down toward these objectives, and he no doubt is coming down this road right here, he's going to have to make a decision about what he does. And uh, actually, I might go ahead and move him up further because here's why. Um, my, my goal here is to dig in behind this creek and this fence right here expecting they're going to come down here. So I can bring these guys forward and kind of give him something else to have to think about. That's the plan. We'll see how it works out. Okay, so here they come. And they're coming right where I want them to. So now hopefully this battle is going to go way differently than the last one is because now we're on the defensive. We're letting him come to us. We're about as prepared as we can be. And we're just going to pour it on him now. We desperately need a nice victory here. We got a big advantage in manpower at the moment, so that helps. I'm gonna light up the third Delaware as best we can here. There's the sixth Wisconsin. That's a, a historically a Iron Brigade unit. You know what? Let's go ahead and move these guys up. Army of the Peninsula under John T. Morgan. Gonna move them right up to this spot here. Actually, eventually get them all the way up to the fence itself. I've got this swamp protecting my right flank, which is really nice. So it's really, he's coming at me at the center. I don't know why my reserve units are up on the front lines like that. They should be in the reserve. So I wanna pull a couple of these guys back. All right, we already routed one. Third Delaware. I've got some cav over here. Third, 34th Virginia Cavalry. Let's charge this battery who made the mistake of being out front. All right, I like how this is going so far. So much better to be on the defensive whenever possible. Okay, so the battery got basically one shot off. And now I've got a whole regiment of 900 men charging into that battery. They're going to wipe them out. So a good bit of his force is coming over this way. And honestly, I mean, obviously don't want another Confederate army to be torn up too bad, but it's not as big a deal if it's these guys as it is if it's my units. Pull some of these units back. I don't know why they're up front like this. They should be in reserve. When I moved them up to the creek, for some reason, all of them went up. Okay, so that battery or that uh, cavalry unit is sitting there now that they took out that battery. I may move Garnet up here. Let's go ahead and move these guys up. Because that's where most of his force is. So even if we just take on 
a part of his force and these guys were to get routed or something, I mean, there's still a substantial manpower advantage two to one. I could just hurl everything I've got at him up here and be in good shape. I'll go ahead and move Brian's brigade up as well. Seventy first Virginia's got a bit of an issue here. Because of these skirmishers in behind him. So I'm gonna send this Georgia regiment up there to help deal with that. This is probably gonna be a problem for us, but that's okay. I'm moving up support now. We're probably gonna win a victory before it gets too far. Only 160 casualties so far, inflicted 550. His morale is already super low. Honestly, we could probably just charge forward and just win this battle qu pretty quickly, but I don't want to take any casualties. Uh, as many casualties as I took in that last battle, I don't want to be hyper aggressive here. So let's just be cautious and slowly move into a position of victory. I don't think it's going to take much to do that. Almost there already. I am going to move these guys up, though. I want to get as much pressure on his line as I can. I also want to... Oh, there it is. <laughs> that didn't take much at all. Now that is the kind of victory we like to have. And what I need to do now is I need to get my 4th Division back in with the rest of the Army. So that the next time I fight... I'm not fighting with a missing division. So we'll just see how this turns out. We pretty easily routed him. Only 215 casualties, many of which are probably not even from my army. My army probably took a handful at most. Let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, they're both called the Army of the Peninsula. That's lovely. I lost 116 men. Okay, perfect. So it's a minor victory. We did gain a little bit of prestige, though. So we'll take it. So as I'm looking, I don't see an army of Northern Virginia anywhere. Uh, so I guess we can go ahead and rename ours so we don't have two armies of the peninsula. There we go. It, it's still a core level, and there's not really any way for me to, to raise it to the level of... An army. Uh, only the commander in chief can do that, so I guess that's not happening anytime soon. Let's see if there's anything else I can do at the moment as far as recruitment goes. I don't think there's enough manpower in any one state. There are, however, 115,000 deserters. So when you figure 159,000 men in the field, 104,000 casualties, 115,000 deserters. What we couldn't do, I mean, just think of what we could do if we had a third of those men in the field right now. What a difference that would make. I'm going to go ahead and spend some of my money uh, to study operations. My initiative is super low, uh, so that'll get me at least another half a star on initiative. Um, not exactly sure what that'll do for us, but I'd sure like to see myself get that four-star command, but... I don't know how or whether that will happen. So there's this isolated 3rd Division here, 12,000 men. I feel like we've attacked him before, but um, I'm going to try to hit him. I don't know what else we'll run into if we do that. But I'm going to send my entire force there because I was thinking about moving up here anyway to try and um, grab. There's a Union Hospital here and, of course, the town of Manassas Junction. So we'll, we'll make this move. We'll see if we get into a fight. And if we do, this will be our last fight for this episode. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, he was coming toward me anyway, so we're going to make the first move. We're up to 31,000 men in the army now. I don't think he's going to stick around and fight me. Yeah, he's, he's slipping away. I think we caught him. He's only got 12,000 men. We've got him better than 2 to 1. This is a real opportunity to nail Thomas Welsh. And maybe destroy him. So we're fighting on the 
Manassas Battlefield looks like he's probably dug in somewhere all the way up on the north end of the battlefield. It's not a great defensive position. He does have some high ground and some woods, though. So uh, the good news is we just have a massive manpower advantage. So I'm moving all four of my divisions at once. Uh, we're going to try to keep them as much in sync as I can. I've got a three to one advantage. Any one of my divisions is close to the size of his force. Any two of them should be able to beat him. So I sent ahead my cavalry, just 400 men, just to scout out. And it looks like he's moving down toward me. Uh, so that's going to make for an interesting battle. The cavalry is going to hold him there. And that's going to allow me to basically just send my entire force straight at him. Uh, I don't want to get crazy with it, but let's go ahead and at least send up the 1st Tennessee Cavalry to help out. So they're not by themselves. I'm in the process of moving one of my divisions over here to the right. Seems like that's going to be unnecessary. So Brian's got 2,700 men. Let's go ahead and move him up. We'll get him right into position here. I don't think artillery is going to really play a big part in this battle. Nathan Bedford Forrest will bring him up right here on this side. Go ahead and at least get get this artillery up here. I don't know if they'll be able to hit him from there, but we can try. All right, we're moving into position. I'm actually going to bring these guys up right here. He's got a bit of a problem on his hands in that I'm bringing up brigades on either side of him. Looks like we're already breaking those guys. He does have 12,000 men, so there's more men somewhere. They're probably up here at the objective. Which I'm going to send the 2nd Kentucky up there to scout that out. Alright, let's go ahead and start bringing some more brigades into play here. I want to try and get these guys up here and on the high ground a little bit. push forward. I'm going to let the second Kentucky ride ahead and see what they can see. I think he might be pulling out though. Oh, that was one of my, that was my fourth North Carolina Cavalry. That was the unit that got engaged first. They just withdrew. Oh, no, I don't want you to, oh, I hate that they default to melee combat when I give them an order to advance. the rest of his army? That's the question. We are running out of daylight, though. That's a bit of a problem. I really like how things are going. I don't want to see him run out of... Uh, see him be able to reorganize. Alright, we're going to send in, the, send in everybody. We're going to try to win this thing right now before we go to another day. But I just don't think there's enough of his army there because he's got so much more somewhere else. trying to drive him from the field as quickly as I can. What is the... Oh, it's, it's May, so we should have a few more hours yet. Let's run up and grab the objective if we can. So we've lost 1,300 men. We've inflicted 850 casualties, but... Now we're starting to find more of them. I think we are just going to run out of time though, on the day. But then that will allow me to bring my entire force up and really push him. All four divisions are in position for day two of this thing. It looks like he's going to be primarily in front of us over on this side. So we're going to have to push with Jackson's division as best we can and with Davidson's division I think
think this will go pretty well pretty quickly. We are going uphill. We're fighting in the woods, but we've got overwhelming manpower and firepower. Plus, we're coming in from the other side, and he just doesn't have the numbers to be able to cover me as I'm advancing over here. Just got to watch my left a little bit. Because I think he's dug in over here along this unfinished railroad. We're starting to close the trap now. Uh, Chatham was wounded, my division commander. So that was unfortunate, but I think we're in good shape. Somebody else was just wounded. Wheeler, commander of the 6th Maryland Battery. That's not a huge deal. We grabbed the objective. We're putting on some pretty heavy firepower on him now. We're starting to surround him. So he's lost 15.5% now of his army. We're just going to stick it out like this for a while. We're in good shape. These guys are in a nightmare scenario here, and they're low on ammo. So let's keep pressing forward and really put more fire on them. Oh, there's more in there we couldn't see. We're getting low on ammo, too. What's frustrating is we're two years into the war, and none of my regiments have leveled up enough to select a perk yet. We're up to 2,700 prestige, though. Oh, now who was wounded? Uh, another battery commander. Oh, those batteries. He must have had some heavy uh, counter-battery fire going here because he just wiped out the men on all three of those batteries. All right, let's press forward and end this. Break his line there. I'm gonna break his line over here too. Just about there. I'd like to turn this into a major victory if I can inflict enough casualties. He's up to 24%. I think we might get there. That's only 10% for me. Oh, we got to get him to 31%. That might not happen. That's a lot of extra casualties on top of what we've done so far. We're going to keep charging in there, though. See if we can't do it. I want to try and destroy this army, if I can, of his. Oh, we captured somebody. 95th New York. Excellent. It is a major victory. Beautiful. So that worked. I like it. Boy, after the the rough battle we had at the start of this episode, things have definitely gotten better. We've got a nice amount of prestige now. I might be able to use that for further um, help with the projects for the country, which might help me long term. I still need to get myself a nice big army that I can start marching like on Washington or really go after some of his bigger forces and really inflict some heavy casualties. Okay, so uh, 3,900 casualties inflicted on him. We lost 3,500, but I had a much bigger force. Took out all 25 of his guns. All right, I like it. We're going to wrap it up right there. Long way to go yet. I'm going to try to bring these to you a little more often as I can. I'm home for the next couple of weeks, uh, with the exception of a short trip to Vicksburg for a tour that I'm doing. Uh, but otherwise, I'm home until uh, after Easter when I head to Gettysburg and then to Italy. So we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.